And the reason why that's important comes with this next slide that hopefully comes up, is understanding the process of how it's an indirect measure. If you remember, I was talking about my, my daughter. You could put her on the scale and find out how much she weighs, or else I could hop on the scale first, find out how much I weigh, put her on piggyback style, find out how much we both weigh, subtract my earlier weight from her lower weight, indirect measure. That's what's happening here with hospital blood testing. With hospital blood testing, what is occurring is that we have this molecule, which of course is ethanol, and then we add a reagent or an enzymatic process from NAD plus, and it turns into NADH plus H plus. And, and then it transforms into, from the ethanol originally, to acetaldehyde through alcohol dehydrogenase, and that's, that's the chemistry of it. I don't expect anyone here to really understand the chemistry of it, but I'm going to show you why this is important. If you have lactate, and if you apply the same exact principle of taking NAD+, and it, and it converts into NADH plus H, lactate dehydrogenase, it results in pyruvate. The problem with the way that hospital blood is set up is, again, it's only looking at one particular wavelength. And it's only measuring this portion right here, which is identical to lactate, that portion right there. This machine cannot tell the difference if the reaction is due to ethanol, meaning something that your guy drank or lady drank, or lactate. It is blind to that difference. So if you're in an accident, if you're in, uh, if it's using TCA, it cannot tell the difference between when this reaction occurs and when that reaction occurs. So that's why you have to take a look out for lactate. Because again, this is the entire spectrum. We're only looking at the 340 range. And to be very specific on how it's done and how it works is this is the absorbance. This is the wavelength. And we're only focusing on, instead of this whole big deal, we're only looking at this zoomed in uh, artifact that's there. And the way that it works is instead of measuring the reaction deference to an enzyme at a specific wavelength, hospital analysis is by enzymatic assay. And when we talked about before, this is what happens just normally. Okay, this is what we would expect the, the, the spectrum to take a look like if there is nothing, if there's no, uh, if there's no ethanol in there. Now, when you go and you add the NAD plus and do that catalytic, you do that process that's there that results at the end of the day, what you have is this red line that's identical until it gets to about the 320 range. But remember, we're looking at the 340 range. And what happens is that by adding that process that's there, it makes the difference in the resulting outcome of the wavelength. It's like putting my self on the scale with my daughter on the back of it. So what it's doing, it's designed to do, is to measure that difference that is there. That's what you're looking at, as opposed to the uniqueness of alcohol. There are studies that are out there. This isn't just Justin McShane says so. You can read and take a look at it. But this is a particular graph that I think is important and highlights the danger of it. OK, we're looking at the 340 wavelength. What they did in this particular case is that they studied and they said, OK, there's no we're going to take a subject with no alcohol. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add trauma, we're going to add TCA, we're going to add, um, uh, we're going to add TCA, trauma, uh, lactated ringers, and then at the end you can get this overinflation. But the problem is that there's no studies that are out there that show that contributory error that goes out there. So there's no way to subtract it and take away from it. Oh, because it lactated ringers were involved you can subtract this amount. It doesn't exist. The science is not out there. So the most important thing to take away from it is it's junk. It just doesn't work. There's a wonderful article that I at least put out there, um, and you can Google it and find it by our good friend Joseph Citron. This is the title of it, DUI, DWI, Hospital Laboratory Testing Lacks Forensic Reliability. OK, so now we've spent a little bit of time. And uh, the end result, you get beautiful quotes like this. 
Most hospitals use a variation of enzymatic assay testing known as enzymatic immunoassays or EIAs of serum. This technique lacks the specificity to measure only ethanol. EIA is the most common chemical process in hospital laboratories. Okay, so it's not specific and unfortunately there is no way to meaningfully convert from a plasma blood result to a whole blood result in order for someone to come into court and say, as an expression of his whole blood, he was a 0 0.08 based upon hospital blood method. Okay? And that has to do with just the way there's no agreement among the academics. It's overstated. They all agree that if you do a plasma or a serum test, it always overstates how much uh, alcohol is in the system. But they don't agree on how much. And so the problem becomes it's this high, the, the conversion factor goes from anywhere as low as 1.18 overstatement, meaning 18% overstated, to as high as I shared before, 1.59. Okay, if you have that large of a swing, that's not generally accepted in the scientific community. I wouldn't fly on a plane that says, I'm going to be flying on a plane on one tomorrow, it says we're about 41% right that we're going to be heading the right direction. Okay? You know, the bottom line of it is, that it is absolutely guesswork. Uh, there's no physiologists and conversion factors that exist there that anyone can agree to. Okay, moving right along. We had talked about before the analysis of marijuana and particularly syphilitic hairs. These are different non-forensic methods of testing, the botanical ones like we talked about before. I want to expose you to thin layer chromatography and exactly what that is. Okay, so thin layer chromatography is uh, very easy to understand. Thin layer chromatography is if you've ever seen a bounty commercial where someone spills something and it's a quicker picker upper and one of the things that they do is they take the towel, you know, someone spilled some coffee here. They say, oh, don't worry about it. It's, I got the world's greatest, you know, towel thing uh, that's out there and they quickly pick it up. But have you ever seen the commercial where they go, ours is so great that we can lay it on its edge, let me borrow this real quick, and it's so absorbent that what ends up happening is that if it spills right here, I can put it like this, and it just sucks everything up. That is, in essence, thin layer chromatography, although uh, they don't explain it that way. It's based upon what's called capillary action. That's the drawing up from the bottom that happens that's there. It is very common in different drugs of abuse testing that is out there well, and it's and it's just it's basically bad. There's no other way of putting it. And it's because it's not specific. It's not quantitative. It doesn't tell you how much of anything. It only tells you much like this does that it may be present. 